Hello and welcome to the Genuine Learning Blog. My name is Melissa Galasso and today we're going to talk about a proposed ASU that's come out of the FASB in a very niche area, which is the disclosure of supplier finance program obligations. Um, this is a really interesting, I didn't actually know very much about this until this proposal uh, came out and I kind of tracked the overall um, project here. Uh, but when I was following it, I did Google and found quite a bit of, you know, quite a number of companies who offer offer this type of uh, financing, which I had no idea even existed. So it's kind of interesting for me to learn a little bit here. Um, but this really is a type of um, program that encourages collaboration between buyers and sellers. Uh, and so they are going to have a buyer, a seller, and some type of third party financing uh, entity that's going to be involved in these transactions. And in this scenario, some buyer is going to buy some type of product or service from the supplier, right? So they're going to go uh, as a customer and purchase some goods. Um, and then the supplier is going to actually fill the order, right? So they're going to ship the goods. Let's just use that as a, a, the scenario. And they invoice the buyer and the invoices do say in 30 days. What happens is when they do that, this third party um, banking financing type organization is going to um, have a an online type of platform where the buyer will then approve the invoice in the platform um, and confirm the financial information at, at maturity. Uh, and so basically as a result of this, right, so the buyer in this scenario says, yep, this is, uh, this is an invoice, uh, I did purchase this, right, so they validate. The supplier then would sell at some type of discount, obviously, the um, receivable basically to that financial institution. Uh, typically that's, you know, that's where they're making their money at a discount. Uh, so then the supplier, right, is getting paid right away. So if they're having cash flow issues, uh, this can obviously speed up cash flow. And then eventually the buyer will pay the financial institution at some maturity. And sometimes it can take it from 30 days to say 60 days to be paid. So everybody has some sort of benefit from going through these types of process. So the supplier obviously gets a lot of, you know, their trade receivables are much lower because they're being paid very quickly instead of waiting 30 days to be paid. Uh, so it obviously improves their cash flow. Um, it gives them more access to cash, obviously, and conversion to cash is pretty quick. Um, so this is a new type of financing that's out there. The problem is there's actually nothing in GAAP that warns the user that these types of transactions have been entered into. Um, so these are sometimes called reverse factoring or payables financing or structured payable arrangements. Um, and there's nothing in GAAP that explicitly addresses these. And so what's happening is that sometimes these are just being shown with AP right, from the party who is going through this, even though it's been obviously, um, you know, factor or reverse factored. And so these are disclosures of the supplier finance program obligation. So again, it's on the liability side. This was issued in December during our two week break. So we're um, excited to be able to bring this to you now. Comments are due March 21st of 2022. So all they're doing is they're not giving accounting for this. They're just providing some new disclosure. So uh, just to sort of um, inform the user about these items. And so you're going to provide the term of the program uh, for the obligation amount that they've confirmed as valid. So again, they owe these funds um, to the provider, or whatever intermediary, the amount outstanding as of the end of the period, um, the description of where this is presented. Again, often these are showed in AP, even though they don't really, you know, the supplier um, isn't the one that they owe money to, it's to this through this financing here. Um, and then changes in the amount during the period, including the amount of obligations confirmed and the amount subsequently paid, right? So all they're doing here is providing a little bit of insight to the user. This is um, not intended to change any accounting practice, but more just awareness uh, for the user about these types of arrangements. And so they haven't proposed an effective date here, but they did indicate that it would be retrospective application. So we're going to have to wait until a final ASU is issued um, based on the feedback. They did ask a little bit about the timing of it um, so that we can see. So again, I don't know how prevalent these are, but in Googling it, there was a lot of different opportunities out there. Uh, so it may be more common than I thought. Uh, so I'm interested to see. So interested to hear from you if this is something that you're seeing in practice and uh, is this something that would help? Do you think these disclosures are sufficient for the user? of the financial statements. 
So that's a wrap on this week's blog. Hopefully it uh, gives you a little bit of insight into some new types of financing that you may not have even known existed. So thank you guys so much for joining me and I hope to see you on a future blog. Have a great day, guys. Bye-bye.